Today we're taking a look at the F0 gas bike build to find out if this is worth it. We're going to consider every aspect of a gas bike frame and whether or not building your own or purchasing a pre-built is something you should consider. With the recent acquisition of the Phantom 85, which in my opinion requires a quality frame and wheel set, this was one of our few options on the table. I realize this is not for everybody, and it's a wide step away from the norm on the channel, as we tend to focus on budget builds with budget motors. But this is something else that's a completely different animal, and if you're eventually going to step into this category of builds, there's a lot of information in here you might want to consider. If not now, in the future. Enjoy the video. Okay, so let's go over some of the pre-built options for gas bike frames and talk about our options of building up your own from just the frame itself. Is it worth it to buy a pre-built or should you build from scratch? The felt faker style frames are all over the place, but there are some subtle differences to watch out for. Now in our video we went with the F0, so let's go over some of those components which I consider to be absolutely necessary if you're shelling out the cash for a gas bike frame. They're purpose built frames which means their design needs to complement every aspect of a motorized bike. Starting with horizontal dropouts for chain adjustment, tension adjustment. There are gas bike frames that don't have these. They use the older style Tang dropouts, which is ridiculous if you're building a purpose-built frame. You have absolutely no tension adjustment with these Tangs. Now, ideally, I would have purchased the Zeta Dawn. I love the name, by the way, but that's not why. Uh, this has everything I consider to be absolutely necessary in a purpose-built gas bike frame at a very decent price point of $500. That's great, in my opinion, but as far as I can remember, it's been out of stock, so I don't think this frame's ever coming back, which is a shame. For that price point, you get spoked rims. I stay far away from mags. I know a lot of guys like the mag rims because they look nice, but honestly, on rough road conditions, those brittle mags can explode at the sidewalls, and I've had several viewers comment about how theirs exploded. If there's the phrase motorized bike in the name for a mag rim, stay away from it because of those just going to be a liability in my opinion it does not use the front motor mount which I have seen several people warn me about because they apparently like to crack at the welds and damage the down tube it's got a beefy gas frame design as far as I can tell this looks identical in quality to the F0 which we got which is pretty nice and we'll get more to that later in the video it also claims to have the larger 3.4 liter tank which would have been great for us nice for those longer adventure trips now, our forks that come with this one actually look like decent adjustable forks, possibly gas charge, maybe oil shocks, I don't know, but they look like they have an adjustment here, which means they're probably going to be of somewhat higher quality than the knockoff triple tree suspension forks we got with our build. We'll get more into that later. You get your front disc, rear rim brake setup. I know a lot of guys love to have a full disc setup. But I don't really think it's practical from a building standpoint and a maintenance standpoint in the long run. Having rear rim brakes is going to make things a lot easier when it comes to rear sprocket, chain alignment, and just dealing with any issues you have on the rear wheel set in the future. That is my ideal bike. So hopefully this will come back in stock someday and we can do a review on it. So, we went with the F0 because out of the other options, it was the only thing that ticked off all those boxes. Well, most of those boxes. We still have a full disc brake setup, which is a bit of a headache in my opinion. Uh, dealing with the TAF was decent because it just got lucky. And this one's okay, but it wasn't perfect, and we'll get into that later in the video. Now, let's talk about building your own. If you decide to build your own bike, I assume you're doing it because you want customizability, you want the enjoyment of doing the full build yourself, and you're not too concerned about price. If you are going to build your own frame, you can go as high on the quality budget as you want. But if you're going to argue that building your own frame will save you money, it will not. You get a gas bike frame for about $200. You need some forks. You can go with any forks you want, but for the sake of the video, we'll just use the style that came with the F0. Um, you're going to need... Now, this isn't the style you'd use with the triple tree, but it's just a, fi a place filler. You're going to need um, something to hold on to. So you're going to need some handlebars, and you're going to need a headset. Okay, we'll add in just a decent pair, nothing fancy. Now, you can go with any style of seat you want, but 
were trying to match the kind of cafe race racer look that came with the F Zero. So if you want to keep that look, you're going to be spending some money, but you can get a decent seat for like 40, 50 bucks. Okay, uh, sprocket came with the 36 tooth, so we got a 36. Uh, you're going to need spacers for the sprocket and disc brake setup in the rear. Well, you're going to need a brake setup, just under $40, so it's just your average run-of-the-line cheap brake set. You'd need one of these in the front, but the back's very specific on what you have to use, so you won't be using the backs, but we'll just use this as a place filler. You're going to need a bottom bracket and a crank set with a chain ring, so we got this here. Okay, now the wheel set, um, this is where you're going to spend a lot of time looking for just the right wheel set, but a full wheel set that's of decent quality for a motorized bike gas frame is going to end up running you around $200. I'd say between $150 and $200 you can really shop around. Okay, the tires, I were actually able to match the Maxxis hookworm tires that come with this. You're going to need two of these and these tires are not cheap. So we're going to need two. We've got two here. Yep, we're going to add that to the cart. Okay. Let's move on. You're going to need a bike chain. It's the standard bike chain. You can do whatever you want on quality, but we'll just say that the $14 price point seems fine for a bike chain. You're going to need a freewheel. They're going to run you about 10 to 20 bucks, depending on what quality you want. And you, this is the rear brake disc, or the rear rotor, that you're going to need to clear the caliper on gas bike frame. And so that's going to add on an extra $30. It's a 220 millimeter road and I couldn't find it on Amazon. So yeah, that's just what we got. Now let's take a look at this cart. So our total for a full custom gas bike frame, and this is kind of on the lower end of the quality scale, but not absolute budget, is about, well, $830. Moving back to the F0 on BikeBerry, we can see that if you try to build this from the ground up, you're going to be paying pretty much the same price, assuming you use equal or better quality components. Now, I assume that if you're planning on building your own custom gas bike frame from the ground up, you're not too concerned about this exact price point as you want to get your own custom look and use higher quality of components, and that's fine the build itself is worth it, in my opinion, and you're not being charged an outrageous price for the components. However, how is it once you start actually building the bike? Is it still worth the $800 price point when you put a motor on it and start riding the bike? Let's find out. We purchased this bike during the Labor Day sale and saved $100, so for us it was $700, and I recommend waiting for a holiday if you do plan on purchasing one of these bikes, as they always go on sale. It arrived with the front tire, forks, and headset removed, requiring assembly. It was well packed with no signs of shipping damage, and shipping only took about a week. We pay no shipping charge or tax when purchasing this bike. Starting with the wheel set, I'm initially impressed. These Maxxis hookworms look fantastic. They've got a lot of grip for road conditions and a round profile. That's pretty much all they're for though, is road conditions. They're not particularly thick either, so if you deal with a lot of punctures, keep that in mind, as you might need some kind of a inner tube protector or a lot of sealant. Our inner tubes were mismatched and nothing special. They don't feel super thin. They feel kind of like the 30% thicker style that you get from Goodyear. The rims are beefy and impressive, but not perfect, mainly because ours had a little bit of damage on them. Looks like they got rubbed on the concrete in certain places, but it's superficial damage. It doesn't appear to affect anything on the inside of the rim. They're thick. They're thicker than anything I've used on a bike so far. So these ones definitely look like they're capable of withstanding the torture of a motorized bike. Unfortunately, the protective liner for the inner tube was paper-thin old inner tube that was just cut up. In normal circumstances, this is okay, but ours was damaged, so we went ahead and replaced it with Gorilla Tape, as we normally do on most of our builds. This is just to protect the inner tube from the spoke screws. Unfortunately, the spoke gauge was not listed on the website, so I can't tell you exactly what these are, but they do look pretty beefy and a little bigger than the Cranbrooks. And if you know, the Cranbrook already comes with some pretty beefy spokes. Here's a close-up look of the sprocket, spacer, and rotor used on the rear wheel. This is an area I'll be keeping a good eye on throughout the future, as I've heard stories about how this hardware can pull the threads right out of the wheel and make it useless for a motorized bike. We can only hope that they use quality hardware and screws that go deep enough into the hub to deal with the constant torque of the motor and braking system. We'll find out in a future review how well these hold up.
If you've installed a threadless headset before, doing the triple trees will be no different, as it's pretty self-explanatory how these work. However, if you've never installed a threadless headset, you're going to probably want to watch some videos, because there are no instructions included with this bike. It was pretty easy and straightforward after watching a quick video. Now, the triple tree quality of forks we get initially looks pretty good. The website said we were getting non-suspension forks, but the picture and what arrived were different. We got the suspension triple trees. In my opinion, I think the actual suspension section of these forks is not of high quality. As a matter of fact, I would argue that it's just about as you would expect from a Walmart bike, maybe a little bit better. The triple three themselves feel strong and sturdy, but the suspension forks, well, they're kind of offset and crooked just a little bit. I didn't find this an issue after installing the front tire, they seem to straighten out but I'm not very confident under hard braking conditions that these forks would hold up and not buckle. So keep that in mind. I'm not familiar with the brand of the braking system used on this bike, but I'm very unfamiliar with disc brakes in general, so I can't say much. They seem decent, but required massive adjustments out of the box. This was expected, however, as we had to put the front ones on anyways. I was a bit confused at first with the mounting setup for this seat. The pictures on the website did not match the hardware we got. Turns out these tabs had to be bent inward, and for some reason came bent outward. Eh, easy fix. But I noticed with the cafe-style seat, there's a lot of limitations. They look fantastic, they're absolutely gorgeous, and they give you a very aggressive stance when you're riding the bike, but they have major drawbacks for practicality, which will become very obvious later in the video during the test ride. Your height adjustment is incredibly limited because of the supports on the rear side of the seat, and your angle is also dependent on the height of the seat itself. The cushion is decent, but I would say this is definitely not practical for anything beyond a 30 minute ride. But once installed and tightened down, I will admit it feels very solid. The whole idea behind a gas bike frame is that it's supposed to complement every aspect of mounting a motorized bike kit, and this one does not. Unfortunately, the designer decided to use a large chain ring, and this is sucks for two reasons. One, it doesn't clear the motor if you decide to flush mount to the frame, and two, it's harder to pedal from a dead stop. Ideally, in a perfect world, this chain ring would be much smaller. You can either replace the chain ring or use a universal adapter on your motor. Now the stock universal adapter that comes with your kit will work and everything will clear just fine, but because this is a nice build and I wanted it to look a little better without that adapter sticking out so much, I decided to go with a black CNC machine one from CDH. Mine was a little too small at 1.5 inches, so I had to remove a bit of material to match it to the frame. This did work, but unfortunately it also lifted the motor higher than the stock universal adapter, meaning that the clearance between the pipe and the frame was so tight I couldn't use the lower half. This will probably be taken care of later, if a pipe ever becomes available for this kit, but if you plan on using a standard universal adapter plate, you should be fine. Yeah, a smaller chain ring makes more sense on these bikes. Easier to pedal from a dead stop, and clears the motor. Why they didn't do that? I don't know! Moving on to the chain line, which is usually one of the biggest headaches when it comes to building a motorized bike, and another aspect that's supposed to be taken care of with a gas bike frame. Clearance and alignment. Alignment's decent, but with these particular tires, if you center them perfectly, the chain does not clear the tire. And you don't have a lot to work with here because of the rear disc and sprocket setup, which is why I greatly prefer rear rim brakes whenever possible, but we just don't live in that world. An unfortunate situation I found myself in when complementing the horizontal dropouts for chain tension adjustment is the fact with dual disc brake setups, that doesn't really apply, as the calipers are in a very set position with almost no adjustment whatsoever, so if you find yourself moving the rear wheel to adjust t chain tension, you might find out that you're only engaging half of your brake pads on the rotor, or over engaging by pushing them in too far. The caliper doesn't move, even though the tire does. So. That sucks, and is yet another reason why I prefer rear rim brakes. With my past building experience and a bit of creativity, I've been able to overcome these small obstacles, and we have a solid running bike. But let's get on to what I know most of you guys care about the most, the quality of the frame itself. Well, the frame is beefy, and I think it's going to have no problem withstanding the abuse of the Phantom 85, and pretty much any motor you can strap inside here. It is aluminum, however. Preferably I'd rather have steel, as with a motorized bike I'm not too worried about weight, 
but it is a lightweight bike compared to my other builds. Now, aluminum does not mean it's a immediate ticking time bomb. You can use high quality grade aluminum and have a frame that'll last a long time and even withstand vibration, but I still would prefer steel for peace of mind. I know it would make the bike a lot heavier, but I'm not really worried about that. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to get a nice steel frame with this design, so we work with what we got. The welding on the frame itself looks absolutely beautiful. I don't see any issues with the build quality of this frame, and I think it's going to be a tank with a tank. Pun. Other than the issues we've covered so far in the video, the bike went together pretty smooth with uh, no major hitches along the way. So let's get on to the ride and see what we think. Before we move on to our initial thoughts and opinions about this build, there's a few things I'd like to get out of the way. First, remember that my thoughts and opinions about a build can change throughout the future as we've had time to grow into it and make fine adjustments. So don't take anything I say about this bike too seriously right now until we've had time to give it a proper review. Now I have some news for the Phantom 85. This is a direct quote from Mike at BicycleEngines.com. He sent me this in an email. Now I'm going to paraphrase the first part and then we'll give you the direct quote. Now he did say they originally planned on having top ends uh, available by themselves as a, an upgrade for the YD100, but due to limited stock, they're holding on to their top ends to make sure they can cover any warranty issues people might have with the Phantom. We've been hearing a lot of mixed things in forums, YouTube channels, and on the Discord server. Some people love them, some people are having issues. I need to get some miles on this bike as soon as possible, so if there are any issues with this motor, I can let you guys know as soon as possible. So far, I'm not having any reliability issues, and the motor's performance is just fine, but I've been riding it very limited. Now, here's a direct quote from them. Good news, though. Our purchasing manager did let me know that on our most recent parts list, he was sent cylinder kits and expansion chambers were both listed for the phantom kit so hopefully we can get those available sooner than we originally thought so what this tells me is that yd100 owners will be able to upgrade to the phantom 85 cylinders in the near future and phantom owners will have an expansion chamber available for the phantom 85 now hopefully this is a proper tuned expansion chamber and not just a chop cut welded version of the mc65 style pipes because this has much different displacement and port timing than a China doll motor, so I don't know what the tuning on that pipe would be like. Back to the F0, what do I think? Well, is it worth it? We saw that on paper all the parts add up to an acceptable price, so if you're going to think about building one of these yourself, you already have my answer. This is a bike that I think is very niche. 
You build one of these if you know exactly what you're going to use it for, and not intended for a new builder. The laid-back design of the cafe style with the aggressive handlebars is not something I find practical to ride as an everyday bike. Long trips on this are definitely not something that's going to be enjoyable. I'm not saying it can't be done, but with the stock configuration, I just don't see myself doing it. I'm six foot four and I am cramped up on this thing. Pedaling is almost impossible. It's definitely impractical. So getting the bike going from a dead stop is going to be an issue if you have anything weaker than the Phantom 85. Luckily with this motor, it has no problem pulling, even with the 36.2 sprocket, meaning that on level ground, you pretty much don't have to pedal to get going. In my opinion, it's a showpiece. The bike is downright beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's also going to be a magnet for thieves, so make sure you lock this thing up tight. I see these frames used a lot on the racing circuit, but I don't know anything about that. I imagine they're pretty good for that purpose, given the fact that a lot of guys use them. I think the question that might give you guys the answer you're looking for is, would I purchase another F-Zero for a future build? And the answer to that is without hesitation, no. I definitely don't want to build another one of these bikes. It's not that the building process was hard, it was actually relatively easy, minus the few issues we ran into along the way, which are completely common. But I think I led myself into a false sense of thinking that because this is a gas bike frame, it would naturally be a good rider for a motorized bike, and that's just not the case. Don't get me wrong, I don't believe this would be my opinion on every gas frame build. Had I been able to obtain the Zeta Dawn, which has been out of stock forever, I think this would be a completely different story, as the geometry setup on that bike complements daily riding a lot better than something like the F-Zero. With the standard bicycle seat design and the option to have more traditional lifted handlebars, you could certainly enjoy a ride on that bike much better than the F-Zero much more practical in my opinion, and you still maintain the benefits of a gas bike frame with the built-in tank, some decent looks, and the easy to build design for a motorized bike. If it wasn't for the channel being specifically geared towards motorized bikes, I don't think I would have ever built the F-Zero. I went back and forth so many times before I eventually pulled the trigger on this bike, and that was when it was on sale. I don't find myself in any buyer's remorse because of the channel, and this is important information for a lot of viewers, but if I didn't have the channel and I just built this for fun, I think I might have a little buyer's remorse right now. That's why we've been so geared towards budget builds on the channel for so long. They're more attainable to a lot of viewers, and in my opinion, every single one of my other bikes is more fun to ride than this thing. The bike rode okay, I didn't have any major issues. With the geometry of the headset and the triple trees with the laid back seat, it felt kind of weird at first, definitely something I had to get used to, but nothing I felt concerned about. The solid frame did not feel like there was anything going to fall off the bike. I don't take that for granted, of course, but this definitely feels like it's going to have no issues handling the motor. My final conclusion is that the frame is a good base to build off of for something like the Phantom 85, but this style with the laid back seat and the aggressive handlebars is not something I find practical, so if you're going to custom build, keep that in mind if you want it to be an everyday rider. So all in all, I think the frame itself is a tank that will withstand the abuse of the motor, I just don't know if at the end it was all worth it. This style of a gas bike frame is something I think you build or buy if it's just what you know you absolutely want and you don't care too much about practicality. But keep in mind the price point. This $300 motor on top of an $800 bike is something that's closely approaching the price point of a Honda Grom clone, which have proven to be pretty reliable and obtainable. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and got some useful information, and until next time, ride safe.